What's up, Ja'Cory? Uh, what's good, What's up, my guys? Good How to see doing? you. Good to see you. Living good, dog. Yeah? Yeah. Life is good. Can't complain. Huh? Life is good. <laughs> um, yeah, bro. Thanks for coming out, you know, being a part of our video series of Vinci. You know, our goal is to inspire others, and hopefully these videos will inspire people to turn their dreams into reality, which is what our brand is all about. Uh, we'll just ask a few questions to hear your story, dog. Let's do it. You ready? Yeah, let's do hey. it. Um, you know, one thing we could start off with was what's kind of your story? How did you get to become a MLS player? So I probably started soccer around like six or seven with the boys and girls club in Bowie. Yeah. Okay. Um, honestly, I just did it just because like it was a sport to do in the springtime, I think. <laughs> um, so I was playing like football, basketball, I think karate at the time, baseball. That was doing baller. Yeah, I was doing yeah. a little bit of everything. You know, I, I had hoop dreams, really. Hoop dreams. I wanted to be Allen Iverson, you know, make it to the league, but didn't grow that that much yeah, um, yeah, yeah. but you know uh, as I grew up kind of the other sports fell away and um soccer kind of just stuck around and so mm -hmm. right probably around like age 12 was when I really started taking it more seriously okay um and then just tried to climb the ranks there you know in my eighth grade yearbook I have like a when I'm in 10 years I want to be a <laughs> professional soccer That's player <laughs> um so I it's something cool to like think back on like yeah like that was my childhood dream was to you know, mm -hmm. become a professional soccer player and you know, right. I, I did that. So uh, it's been a lot of ups and downs, but yeah, I'm here. Now you're here, yeah. you're MLS player. <laughs> um, you play at Wake Forest, right? Yeah. All right, yeah. so you're born at Wake Forest. Four, four years at Wake Forest. Rep North Carolina, dog. Go, go Deeks. <laughs> 919 game. I don't know about Deeks, but yeah, 919. I don't you know. know what Winston-Salem is, to be honest. <laughs> All right, so, um, you know, being a soccer player, you know, in our world, we have to stay motivated all the time, every day hungry all the time um what's something that you kind of feel that is kind of like your your passion what drives you every day what motivates you every day to, to keep going and keep being a professional soccer player yeah it's, um set lofty goals for myself you know i want to be you know the guy on the team you know mm -hmm. i want to you know make national team you know you have goals for yourself and until right. you attain those you're going to work every day as as hard as possible to, to achieve those goals and it does get frustrating especially during the down mo moments but you yeah. have to take a step back and look at the bigger picture like oh this is what I'm truly going after and um, these are just bumps in the road it's not like a you, it's not an obstacle you can't get around so right. it's, uh, it, it is challenging but you you find those those moments each day to get like a little bit better to yeah. achieve those goals yeah that's sick it's kind of like you know soccer's a roller coaster dog yeah it's the highest highs and the low um, lows but you just gotta find a way to just shoot right go through it dog <laughs> keep an even kill you know yeah man that's crazy i mean that's a good thing i think a lot of people can take a lot from that especially when they're trying to get to a big goal you know you have to reach little goals first to get to that big goal i think that's a lot of advice that people could could take advantage of for sure yeah and like celebrate those little wins too like right oh, i i wasn't the big big goal i wanted to achieve but it, was, it helped me along my path so it's like all right like let's take a moment i am making some progress towards that goal right and you know celebrate that mm -hmm. and then so it kind of builds up your confidence so that when you do hit those like tough moments you're like nah like i can get over i can overcome this one too because i've done all this in the past right 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 so so speaking about tough moments what's yeah. one of the moments of your career where you've really faced adversity probably or maybe like your hardest struggle point of your career yeah i always kind of think back to my my rookie year um mm -hmm. about like six months into my first season um you know i was put on loan to tulsa roughnecks okay um in the moment i didn't know that was the biggest blessing for that year for me but right. uh you know in the moment i was thinking yo they, dallas is ready to cut me <laughs> you know, my my dream of being the mls is done yeah um but you know it it once I got over those, those those ideas and I was able to play games, um, I was also still able to drive back to Dallas to train with the, for the MLS team. And okay. I could see myself getting better each and every week. I could feel more confident on ball. I remember how much fun soccer was. Like, you know, right. when you're just training all the time, it feels like it's just a drag. And mm -hmm. I, I lost my joy for the game. But, you know, once I went to Tulsa and I was getting those games and I was coming back and training well, I found like, oh, soccer is like, actually a fun sport this yeah. is what i wanted to do growing up you know like it reminded me of right. you know why i wanted to achieve these goals and mm -hmm. um you know that was that, 
turned out to be the, the biggest thing for me and the, the best thing that could have happened was going out alone. But yeah. in the moment, ooh, <laughs> yeah, I you was heated. I was heated. I thought I was done and dusted, but uh, it really worked out in the end. Yeah, that's sick. That's a that's a cool story. Uh, it's crazy how people be thinking like things that change in their life. They think it's the worst thing ever, yeah. but it could actually turn out to be a blessing. Yeah, catapulted is, me forward. Yeah, so. it's just crazy. Um, so. What's one of your famous, most inspirational quotes? Yeah, I'm going to have to bust it out. You have to out. bust it out yeah. to, to remember? Yeah, I put this on my high school yearbook, to be honest. So, if a problem is fixable, if a situation is such that you can do something about it, then there's no need to worry. If it's not fixable, then there's no help in worrying. There's no benefit in worrying whatsoever. Okay, that's dope. That's dope. So, so, so what does that mean to you? So, it's hard to practice because it, it feels like, Things that are out of your control, you still stress over. Mm -hmm. Like, I wish things can be a certain way. Uh, I want this to be an, another way to work out in my favor. But if you can't control those things, what's the need of worrying about it? Right. And if you can't control those things, then you have the power and the capability to go have an influence and make those things right or work them out in your favor. So mm -hmm. uh, it's a tough balance because you, you kind of want to control so many things and uh, control what other people do, right. and their thoughts, or whatever they, that the case is, and you forget about those sometimes. But, right. Um, yeah, it just boils down to control what you can control, and if it's not in your control, don't worry about it. Yeah, that's something we were saying to each other today. We dog. were talking about this, in, yeah, today, and it's like you you forget about those moments, and yeah. you want things to be exactly the way you want them to be, but yeah. you gotta sit back and realize, no, just work on what you can control. Right. Exactly. So make sure everybody hears that. <laughs> control what you can control. That's all that matters. You reach whatever you want to reach. <laughs> um, so outside of footy, what's what are things such hobbies like you do? I know you said you used to play sports as you were a kid, but what do you do in your free time now? Yeah, I watch a, a lot of TV shows and movies. <laughs> um, I mean, it, a lot of people do that, but you know, I, I really have a joy in like watching yeah. a movie. Like, yeah, I know that actor from this movie. <laughs> I know that, and kind of go down a rabbit hole. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I'm trying to learn some Spanish. Uh, one step at a time. It's a slow process learning a language right you now. It, but dog. You're improving yeah, every I'm day. Improving. I'm getting better. <laughs> just 1% better every day. I'll get there. Um, so just doing a, a lot of things just to keep the mind sharp, you know, whether mm. it's reading. I'm in class as well. Um, so just kind of doing a lot of things to keep the mind sharp and right. get the mind off of soccer a little bit just so you're not 24-7 just, like, banging your head against the yeah. wall. So. Yeah, I kind of like that. You know, a lot of people say, like, athletes are just athletes, and I think – us pushing that limit and kind of saying, nah, we're more than just athletes, you know, like uh, me okay. having the Vinci Foley brand exactly. and, and studying as well. I think it's audible to see that. I think all the athletes should be doing that, you know, finding something they like outside the game while they're playing the game. And it helps you like focus back onto the field, but also mm -hmm. like our careers are short. Let's be honest. Like yeah. there's still 30 plus years of life after soccer's done and yeah. you're retired. So you got to find out like what you're, you're like, you're not Ja'Cory Hayes, the soccer player. I'm just Ja'Cory Hayes. So. Right. I got to find, like, the full, what else I like to do. Right, exactly. Yeah, that's sick. Um, so who would you say is one of the most influential people in your life or someone that you look up to? Uh, my mom is definitely probably the most influential person. Um, mm -hmm. Definitely bounce off, like, all my ideas off her. And, yeah. you know, she's kind of a, my sounding board, my consultant on yeah. a lot of things. So um, she's the one that's there to, you know, when I'm down trying to give me advice to lift me back up or... You know, if um, she's there to celebrate my wins and good moments. So she's definitely um, a very important person for, for me. And, you know, she's, she's helped me out so much besides, you know, yeah. giving, giving me life. Yeah, you know, yeah. Stuff, but, <laughs> but she's helped me out so much along the way. Yeah. Yeah, I think for me, too, it's my mom as well. You know, just being, you know, her being single, raising me, going to class, working at the mm -hmm. same time. Like, incredible. as I got older, I got to kind of realize how, like, how much I'm inspired by her and kind of how, like, we're the same person. Obviously, yeah. cause she had me young, so it's, like, we kind of act the same. I think that's kind of where my drive comes from. But, yeah, I think for all the wins and downs, you know, your mom's always going to love you, always push you. So, I think yeah. we should give a shout-out to the moms. Yeah, shout-out to all moms out there. Moms. Keep supporting <laughs> your sons and daughters. Um, let's see. Do you have a funny story about your childhood? Funny One that story. I can throw that you can say on camera. On camera? <laughs> Um, probably, I don't, it's, I guess, funny now looking back on it, but it was pretty messed up then was I was riding my bike with my sister and <laughs> went down a hill that was a bit too steep for me at that level <laughs> of bike riding. 
Yeah. Uh, and I flipped over the handlebars, went face first into the asphalt. Um, I had to actually get rushed to the hospital and stuff like oh, wow. that. Oh, um, I was, like, throwing up, had, like, some, like, bone fractures and stuff. But, hey, yeah, that's crazy. It was, it was all right. Shout out to my sister, though. She kept a calm head and <laughs> ran and found my parents. Um, so, yeah, looking back, that was, like, kind of funny. Something I chuckle about with my sister now, yeah. but in the moment, probably probably not. Hey, that's crazy. <laughs> that's a crazy story. Um, this is an interesting question. Yeah. What's one thing you've always wanted but you still don't have to still this day? Still don't have to this day. Man. Huh. I think uh, ultimately what I want to do is something that kind of I can pass down to my kids and help down help out my family, my brothers and sisters. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if that's starting a business or, you know, um, so I, I just want to like leave a legacy like that where I help out the people that are closest right. to me and they don't have to worry about you know, anything, anything, right. they're able to just, you know, enjoy life, travel, right. have fun, which is what life's all about is having those experiences and mm -hmm. having fun with those close around you. It's not really to be about working and grinding for, for money. It's right. really to enjoy those around you. So hopefully I can do something to make that a little bit easier for those around me. Yeah. I think that's, that's exciting. I mean, I definitely think you'll figure it out sooner yeah. or later, but yeah, that's exciting for for your family, you know, for them to hear that. Maybe they'll see this video yeah. and be like, celebrating <laughs> in the background. <laughs> That'd be dope. Um, if you had a million dollars tomorrow, wow. what would you spend it on? What would you do with it? Gotta give some back to the fam for sure. Yeah. Um, might buy a, a house or two. <laughs> <laughs> Real estate, man. Real estate, man. Put that in the ground. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, give some to charity. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's one of those just like, again, help other people. Right. Um, but yeah, help those around me, some real estate, and then help some other people. Yeah, some other people. Yeah, that's dope. You always, I feel like you always got to give back, you know. Yeah, we got to make the future better for people coming through, you know, our shoes or the shoes that we didn't have, yeah. the knowledge we didn't have back then, you know. There's always going to be people coming in. So how can we help them know what we know now? Exactly. Pass that on and, you know. I hope those less fortunate that aren't in that position, you know, if you're right. able to give back. Mm -hmm. All right. So this is kind of an interesting personal question. Yeah, yeah. Um, what do you think are your three worst qualities and what do you think are your three best qualities? Um, I don't know if I got three off the top of my head. Or just one. doesn't but, matter. Uh, I think I'm a overall pretty friendly guy mm -hmm. in terms of, um, like, try to genuinely care about those I'm talking to and, you know, hear how they're feeling and joke right. around with them. I like to say I'm a pleasure to be around. <laughs> um, um, you know, but I guess the worst quality is probably, I, I don't hide my emotions very well, which could be a good thing. You know exactly right. what I'm thinking. Um, but I also like, when I'm sad, like, you know it. Like, yeah. um, you, you, you know exactly how I'm feeling and I'm mm. kind of Debbie Downer at that right. point. Um, so hopefully I can work on that to, you know, not be so transparent <laughs> and still be a joy to be around even though right. I'm not feeling up to it. But, um, yeah, that's probably my worst quality. Yeah, I mean, it's not bad to have your worst quality yeah. when you're in your sleeve. Yeah, dog. yeah, that's you know, I got no poker face, dog. No you got, you're going to run all my money if we're playing poker, dog. I can't hide anything. Yeah, that's cool. I know your wife one day is going to appreciate that. <laughs> right? Yeah, shout out wifey. Shout out wifey <laughs> in the future. Yeah, future wifey. <laughs> all right, last question. Um, you know, Kyle, our slogan is turn your dreams into reality. What would you tell people who are in this pursuit of turning their dreams into reality? Uh, a big thing my college coach used to say was, you know, get 1% better. Mm -hmm. um, and it doesn't seem like much each day. Um, but, you know, after months, years, 1% adds up to a lot. You yeah. Know, you think about, like, compound interest or whatever. Um, mm -hmm. It all compounds on each other and it just shoots up exponentially. So it's, it's every day, you know, put in that little bit of work to try to achieve your goal and, mm -hmm. you know, there's going to be, like we talked about earlier, there's going to be setbacks. There's going to be moments where you're kicking yourself thinking, nah, this ain't possible. There's no way I can do yeah. this. But 
you know, remember your your why, your your reasoning for yeah, that's getting on this journey. Yeah. And yeah, each day make make strides, whether it's yeah, actual stride, a walk, <laughs> you crawl in, yeah, you roll over, <laughs> just something that you pushes you forward just that little bit. So then, you know, you look back after a month or so and you're like, Yeah, I accomplished that. You know, after yeah. some more times like, Yeah, I've actually accomplished a lot. So the biggest thing is from turning your dreams to reality is just every day working working hard working close you get a step closer every get day a step closer that's cool yeah. man that's awesome all right well thanks my boy yeah. that's all i had for you for Anytime, today my guy shout out to jacory hayes best ball out here you know i try yeah, we good, <laughs> <laughs> we good?